What am I doing for a living? What am I doing in this office? Each time I'm being asked a question, I struggle to give a clear answer. Which is weird because I really do love small talk and socialization. And I noticed that I was not the only one. Professionals of the recruitment industry are struggling to explain to their friends, family and relatives what they are doing for a living. And to be fair, I had pretty much no idea myself before joining a staffing company eight years ago. And when you think about it, it actually makes sense. We are dealing with very sensitive information. We are basically helping people to leave a company to another one. Confidentiality is in the recruitment DNA and the recruitment industry by its nature always had to keep low profile. And this is why it's quite of an opaque industry. So whatever you are considering taking a job in the recruitment industry, using recruitment services for your company or looking for a job, through a recruitment partner, stay with me and I will give you an overview in four points of what is the recruitment industry and what is the service that is fitting the best you need. And to do so, let me give you an example you can all relate to. So let's say you have a friend and he's starting a car dealership. He's doing pretty well and very soon, if he wants to grow, he will have to hire and he will face the recruitment challenge. So what are the options for your friend? The first option is looking through his network. Let's say that your friend is lucky and he manages to find the people that he needs. He, he was looking for an administrative assistant and two sales. So now he has a team and they are doing very well and they are growing even more. So now they need to recruit new people. As you can imagine, at one point, the network is no longer sufficient because they are looking for more specialized people and every network has its limits. So what is the second option? The second option is to start a classic recruitment process. But the thing is that your friend and his team, they are very busy. This is why they want to hire more people. So they have no time. Moreover, they don't have the expertise internally. They don't really know how to do. And those are the main reasons, the two main reasons why you would outsource your problem to an external partner. And if he wants to outsource his recruitment needs, what are your options for your friend? The first option for your friend is to hire a temporary agency. A temporary agency will help you to find a great variety of profiles. This is what we call a generalist. The offer is very high. There are a lot of candidates, but the demand is reasonable. So, for example, we all had contact with a temporary agency when we were looking for a first job or for a student job. The candidates are often reaching them out and they don't have to source actively candidates. And what are the benefits for your friend? It will save him a lot of time, but also it reduces the risk because those employees, those people, they won't be on his payroll. So he doesn't have the cost and the liability associated, but also it offers a great flexibility because those are a weekly contracts. And Last but not least, it is also kind of a trial period because if he wants to hire permanently the candidates after six months, it is still a possibility for him. And how much will it cost to your friend? The temporary agency will apply a coefficient to the weekly gross salary of the candidate. And if your friend's expectations are not too high, it is ideal to hire a back office, a junior to medio accountant, a junior to medio HR assistant. And very soon, the team is growing, they are doing very well, and they now have an HR team. In the HR team, they have an internal recruiter or a talent acquisition manager, so they can take care of their recruitment by themselves. But for temporary needs, for example, a replacement or because there is a peak in their activities, they could still use a temporary agency. But very soon, with the company growing, they will face new challenges. For example, in IT, they will need a network engineer, they will need a software engineer, and the requirements are increasing. And from generous profile, they need specialized profile. And this is where you will hire a staffing agency. They will help you to find specialized profiles in each market. So the demand is very high, but the offer is low. They have to actively source the candidates. And what are the benefits for your friend is the expertise they will manage to find people that they are not able to find by themselves. And we usually use the words uh, headhunters, recruitment consultants, agency recruiters to qualify those recruiting professionals. And how much will it cost to your friend? So I won't go in detail here, but basically the staffing agency will charge a percentage of the annual gross salary. But that was to hire people on a permanent basis, to hire people on your payroll. But let's say that now your friend has a need for a specific skill set for a limited period. For example, he needs to upgrade his operating system to the latest version. Here, a temporary agency won't be able to help because it is really too niche, but no problem. A staffing agency is also proposing contract and permanent recruitment services. And how does it work? Let's say that your friend need a Windows system engineer for six months. So he will contact a recruitment agency and they will connect your friends with a contractor, someone who is able to perform the job and who is available at that time to do it. The contractor has a daily or hourly rate and this is what he's gonna to charge to the recruitment agency. And 
The recruitment agency is going to charge that amount to your friend and they will add their margin. And it is basically how contract recruitment works, but it is important to not be confused with consultancy business. Let me give you an example. Your friend wants to create an app or a new website to sell cars. He has two options. Option number one, he can do it internally, either with his team, but if he doesn't have the resources, he will have to hire. But it doesn't make sense to hire here because he knows that it is a limited project for 12 to 18 months, for example. So the second option is to outsource the project. And here, there are two options. He can either go for a contractor, as I mentioned previously, or he can outsource the job to a consultancy company. So what is the main difference? The main difference is that the consultancy company, it is a company having several consultants and they are all on the payroll. So they are the employees and you as a client, you will outsource your project to that company. And there are mainly two ways of working, either fixed price or time and material. So with the fixed price, it is result oriented. You will agree with the consulting company on a delivery, deadlines, and a budget. With time and material, it is means oriented. So you will pay for each resource and the time that they spent on the project. And this is why it is a bit confusing because it is pretty close to a contractor. The main difference actually being that the contractor is a freelance, he works for himself, and the consultant is working for a consulting company. And the last actor of the recruitment landscape is the headhunting and executive search. And even if your friend's business becomes very successful, the chances are very low that he will ever need their services. They can help you to find really high level profile where there is a lot at stake. You will never find those people applying for a job, posting their resume or speaking with a random recruiter. They are unreachable. You need to use different methods. You can't rely on LinkedIn recruiter or your database. You will mostly find those people through your network. And this is why within that industry, usually the recruiters, they don't have a recruitment background. They are often very senior and they have a valuable network in a specific domain and they learn to monetize it. And basically in this industry, you will make way less placement, but for way more money. And the recruiters, they will also charge you a percentage of the annual gross salary. And here I took a small business as an example, but you can all imagine how even more of a challenge it is for bigger companies, especially with the war for talent in IT, pharmaceutical and engineering sectors. And where do I fit in all of this? What am I doing for a living? I'm actually in the second category, the staffing agency. So I have eight years of experience, five years working as an employee for a staffing agency and three years through my own business. I'm providing my clients with contract and permanent recruitment services and I'm helping them to identify and to find the right profiles in niche and very competitive markets. And in my case, I'm focusing on IT. And I have created this channel to show you the behind the scenes, to unveil the secrets of the recruitment industry and to show my knowledge and expertise, whatever you are a recruiter yourself, you are looking for a job, you are wanting to grow in your career or you are facing recruitment challenges in your own business. And also I will share my entrepreneurship journey and my plan to scale my business. I will be posting a video every week. So if you are interested in any of those topics, please subscribe to the channel and like the video to support me.